The coronation of a king, in a sense, is a marriage between him and his people. And for those of you who were able to watch the TV, you saw that very clearly. And accordingly, solemnized with the signs and the symbols that demonstrate joy and gladness. For the shout of a king is among them. And these issues can be traced into scripture. First Kings chapter 1 verse 40 shows the situation of the crowning of the king of Israel. So I read, and all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes, and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. The highlights of this our short service of thanksgiving is one, give thanks to God for his love. It is always the right thing to do at all times and in all places. Give thanks to God. For the Lord is generous. His mercies are eternal. The Thanksgiving service was in line with the May 6th, 2023 celebrations of the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III and the Queen Consort which saw leaders from around the globe gathered in Westminster Abbey, London, for the holistic milestone. It is the first in 70 years as well as the king, his majesty assuming another extremely important role as the defender of faith and supreme governor of the Church of England. Her Excellency Harriet Thompson, a British High Commissioner to Ghana, in her remarks stated, the new king has used the occasion to promote areas he is passionate about in Ghana. Of course, this audience will know that as well as becoming king, His Majesty assumed another extremely important role as defender of the faith and supreme governor of the Church of England. Though there were a number of impressive events surrounding the coronation, at its heart, the service held at Westminster Abbey was an Anglican service and marks the significance that religion still holds for public life and for wider UK, as I know it also does here in Ghana. While tradition has played an important part in the coronation, the new king has used the occasion to promote areas he's passionate about, youth, community, diversity and sustainability. I know that these are areas that Ghana, as a long-standing friend and valued Commonwealth member, is also an ardent champion for. Last week, we promoted these themes through events delivered in partnership with the local community here in Accra. For example, last Tuesday, the British High Commission staff and volunteers from the Gar community teamed up to clean plastics and waste from the beach in Jamestown. Tonight, Wednesday, May 10, an event she disclosed is to be hosted to celebrate potential of some Ghana's future leaders. And tonight we'll host an event that celebrates the potential of some of Ghana's future leaders, including Commonwealth and Chevening scholars, who will undoubtedly play a critical role in tackling the global challenges facing all of us. With the advent of a new monarch, we look to the future with hope for people and planet not just for the UK, but for the world. Humanity has never been more codependent. We have never needed faith and compassion more than from one another. So now, before we turn to sing the British National Anthem, let me again thank everyone for coming together to mark this special occasion. Shirley Ayokobuchi, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, while congratulating His Majesty, emphatically stated Ghana's commitment to the Commonwealth. This special occasion offered me, and by extension, the people of Ghana, particularly those who did not witness over 70 years ago the coronation of the late Queen Elizabeth II. It gave us the opportunity to witness the solemn ceremony and tradition over a thousand years, as well as the proverbial pomp and pageantry associated with the British monarchy. May I seize this opportunity to extend warm and hearty congratulations to His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty Queen Camilla 
on the occasion of a colorful coronation a few days ago. I commend the British High Commission for organizing this Thanksgiving service to mark the memorable occasion. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the timely assumption of His Majesty the King as head of the Commonwealth family in 2022, at the time when the organization was growing in size, scale, and influence is opportune. And this was clearly demonstrated by the visibility accorded to member countries in the display of flags on the streets of London. I wish to highlight Ghana's appreciation for His Majesty the King's lifelong devotion to Commonwealth Affairs and pledge Ghana's continued commitment to the core values and principles of the Commonwealth. She was, however, optimistic of the continuous collaboration by the King. For centuries, the British monarchy has symbolized stability and continuity, providing a unifying force for the Commonwealth while at the same time inspiring the world at large. On this Thanksgiving Day, we also fondly recall the legacy of the late Queen Elizabeth II, who inspired us with her dedication to duty, compassion for humanity, and unwavering commitment to duty and service. As a committed and active member of the Commonwealth, Ghana is confident that the reign of His Majesty King Charles III will witness the deepening of the shared values of the Commonwealth and serve as a positive influence globally. Recognizing the current global challenges, we commend the King for his role in the fight against climate change. And we are hopeful that the King will continue to his call for closer collaboration for a sustainable ecosystem among Commonwealth nations to help address these challenges and minimize their impact on the promotion of peace and global development. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we may recall the visit of His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty the Queen to Ghana in 2018. The four-day royal visit demonstrated significant collaboration and partnership between Ghana and the United Kingdom. On behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuadu, we pledge our readiness and willingness to work with His Majesty to strengthen the ties between our two countries. And then with a biblical quote, she said, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 24, and I quote, and Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord has chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Oh.